got our panels here, which is obviously part of the flat pack, and um, each panel represents obviously a different. drill uh, the drill will spin the opposite direction it will come back out so pretty sure this is the one there uh, what's going on maybe I'm not locking it tight enough but it appears to be not tight actually help the instructions so I'm just going to buy a picture of it and it's pretty self-explanatory I don't think it really needs an instruction guide to do this and let's face it anyone that's made flat packs normally do it there's that was anyway some of it just simply don't make sense right there's a the bottom one and I'm gonna do the same again obviously for the other side and if you notice, these uh, sides have got uh, holes in this is for buttons to go in. So, yeah, I'm gonna do the same as I just did on the other side of this. And again, line up the bottom, the top, and gently drill in, in the center. So if you're doing this, make sure your drill bit don't uh, 
go to one side because you'll end up with a hole in the side and you don't want that to happen. So I'm going to try and make this is, uh, align it with the opposite side so the screws don't look all over the place. So I don't know, maybe around here. These are just simply ventilation holes, so uh, obviously get this lined up with the other side uh, where the screw is, so it don't look uh, all over the place. And if you're interested in buying one of these, I uh, grabbed this one online and it was very cheap, it was uh, surprisingly cheap actually with delivery as well. Uh, it's MDF and it's 12 millimeter uh, MDF and it's uh, yeah it's really thick it's uh, it's gonna do the job well. Now if you're gonna attempt to put one of these together, uh, don't use glue. Just stay away from glue. So, that's cool. That's the rear panel and the sides now done. I hope you don't. So everything's on uh, for this part and I've just put the. Uh, back panel on here so uh, once again I'm going to uh, drill some holes in here and make sure uh, these aren't wobbly you know that type of thing just line everything up now so you've got to be very careful when you're doing this because you don't want holes going everywhere so first one and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna just quickly uh, screw this in just to give it a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, balance so it's not flopping about everywhere so and there we go very nice So there we go, that's how it's looking so far, it's coming together. Okay, so next part I'm going to do on this uh, cabinet is put the base on, so if I just turn this upside down, this part should be uh, very simple I'd imagine. And so first of all, let's put my cap on this, we don't want people to see my thing. <laughs> right, so... I'm going to get the base and um, let's see how this is going to slot in. So that just slots in there, or so. And looks like this door should be pretty straightforward. It's just a little bit of trick to get everything kind of lines. So let's put this on its uh, back here. And that looks good enough to me. If anyone's been watching what I do all the time on my channel, you can see that I'm an old school, old school there. Best way to be, really. So that's one in. You know what's actually 
you really need a toy sim, what you can buy in flat pack forums nowadays. I've actually discovered you can buy, uh, make your own guitars, like actual kits, like with the body and the fretboard and things like that. It's amazing what you can get uh, online. It's not really surprising the high street is dying with the quality of stuff you can get online uh, nowadays. It's pretty amazing stuff. So the other thing with this arcade cabinet and building, I'm going to put it in the kitchen, I think, once it's all built. And uh, at night time when Beckett's watching the telly or whatever, I can go out there and play some, I don't know, some... So that's one side of the bottom, the base of it done, that's looking good. And I'm going to put one more screw in here, just to uh, give it full strength. Panels is going to be uh, going in the center here. This is where in the uh, screen it's going to be mounted onto. And this bit, which I mentioned earlier, is obviously for your buttons to go into. Uh, you've uh, put this part in here, and this is uh, these holes are obviously for some more buttons to go into. So this is going to be a pair of one button, and this is going to be a pair of two buttons. So I'm going to uh, just assemble this part. Okay, so you can see this part is on, and we are remaining with you. Uh, three panels, so one of these panels, I think it's this one, is going to slot here. Not the, I might just do this one in a second, but this is where the marquee uh, will display just sort of plastic uh, lighting. Uh, we've got another uh, piece here, which is obviously just now that's going to be supporting the screen. So until I get the screen, which is likely going to be tomorrow, I'm going to screw this onto the back of the screen first and then fit it in. Then the next part I'm going to do today is show you the buttons and see if I can put them in. The trouble is, is that uh, I've got vinyl transfers graphics going over this, so it might be easier to put this on first. So let's just uh, take a look how this is going to look. So this is going to slot over there, just a touch. And we're going to have the marquee here and the 90 minute screen. And yeah, it's um, certainly looking good. It's uh, really looking good. Right. So here's our box of goodies. And I do believe we have younger viewers uh, going to be thinking, wow, look at all that. So we have in here, this is for uh, two player, um, for, for the arcade obviously, uh, two players. So we have one USB cable, and we've got lots of these wires. These wires uh, will connect what's called encoders to the buttons and the joysticks. So we've got another USB cable here for uh, plugging into the encoders. We've got two encoders, obviously one for each joystick and buttons. Uh, some more wiring, some more wiring, and these are buttons themselves, these are LED. So once these are wired up, which I'm gonna do in a minute, I think just to get this part out of the way. Uh, yeah, they're gonna like this, they're gonna look really good. And not sure what those are yet. So we've got a mixture of different colors uh, buttons, uh, and yeah, they will look stunning when they're uh, turned on, powered on. Uh, now these parts are obviously where the joysticks go, and these will fit underneath here, screw in, as so, and that's where our joystick is going to be. So in here, got another one here for player two. We got knobs, so <laughs> so yeah, that's it. So the knobs are going to just screw on there, and there should be. That's what I'm looking for. So just to get rid of this ugly hole here, these will go over the top there, followed by the uh, knob for the joystick. Right, so we have here, this is a 19 inch uh, VGA DVI monitor. And the plan is, is to uh, disassemble the stand. And I'm also looking at taking off the frame here. Uh, you know, traditionally on uh, our top arcades or our creative machines in general, you certainly don't see Philips on part of the screen, nor do you see 
other strange things going on like Enma 2-2 stickers so let's uh, get on with this and I'm also going to mention this part that I'm going to do a bit of painting on the bar top today so I've got myself some primer undercoat uh, to make the gold colour stand out like really stand out so this is happily given to me by my dad about his knowledge and this one is from my partner so she's kind of donated this to my project so thank you becky right so first things first before i crack on with this is to figure out how this stand comes off so i'm looking around it and there's no obvious uh screws in place i really have no idea how this one comes off there's a couple of there we go, so that's one part of it off. Now it's like look a bit more easier and I can now identify where the screw is holding this in place by the seams of it. So it's got a flat headed uh, screwdriver for this so hopefully that'll fit all the way through this full which it is uh, doing so. So let's see. So there we go, that's the uh, stand up completely. So we have now got the monitor window stands. And if you're looking at doing one of these yourself, make sure you buy a monitor, which has got your uh, mountable holes in the back. And if I show you what I mean by this, when we put this into the bar top arcade, you'll have likely have a piece of wood like this MDF this is. Uh, we're gonna make holes in this and we're gonna make this mountable to the screen so and for those of you not sure what uh, DVI or VGA is on uh, if you make it make a cheap build as cheap as possible like this project is uh, you've got DVI which is often well it is actually the uh, white here and the VGA is blue now for those in the know who's been around with PCs for long, long enough, you'll know that these are pretty fairly old ports. So, the way to tackle this and to make it a lot better in terms of visuals, in terms of quality, you can actually buy for literally a couple of pounds converters for these. So you have your HDMI end, which is going into the computer side of things. And in this case, I've uh, purchased a DVI, which obviously slots into the white DVI port here. So when we plug this up to the computer, it will recognize it as a higher resolution and it'll look a lot better. So that's that part sorted. So if I show you where this is going, so uh, if you want part one, which I uploaded uh, yesterday or the day before, and I'll uh, put a link uh, above, you'll see that the control panel for two players is gonna be just here. And this part is going to be for the marquee, which is going to rest just here. And I can't do the marquee today because the uh, uh, graphics, the art for this cabinet hasn't come through to me yet. Um, it's quite likely going to be tomorrow, but as soon as it does, I'll continue the video. So we'll have the marquee here. And uh, what happens with the marquee part of this is a piece of plastic. Uh, lights or see-through plastic will uh, align along here, uh, just going here. We will then have the screen, which I explained just now, will be mounted in as so. And it's hard to obviously uh, do all this with a couple of hands, but as you can see where this is going, if we take away the marquee part here, and I change it with how this is going to look, it's kind of going to look kind of uh, like this but like I say it's a bit difficult to show you with two hands and nothing's uh, screwed in yet so let's crack on so yeah first part I'm going to do then is mount this screen onto this uh, piece of MDF and like I said just now we've got the holes already in uh, the screen back screen which is going to make it mountable and I'm going to take this raffle number off just because I can and uh, so yeah let's get on with the drilling to get this mounted right so first things first you're going to need to find yourself some screws which are actually going to be able to uh, screw into the uh, mountable holes on your screen so i found some and these uh these seem to be working fine so what i've done just here to make the holes on the mdf uh mount a bit easier is i've just uh, used the drill 
and I've just lined these up and I've just got to drill another hole here which is in line with the screen so you know some of you might need a pencil for this but uh, I'm not so that's me and that's how I roll so we got our uh, first two holes in here and I'm gonna just um, get on and actually drill all the way through on these and you know obviously make sure when you drill it in uh, you don't wobble to one side they need to be straight so one and the two right so if we bring back our screen and let's take a look if this is gonna work as I plan so two holes look like they're on par with the holes in the back of the screen and let's just double check if our screw is gonna yeah so that's long enough to go into the back of the screen as well so just get a screwdriver and this is a posi drive which is across so just screw down And again. And yeah, it's a bit annoying that the uh, graphics didn't turn up today, but I, I just want to get this done. So I'm going to just um, carry on in a few other bits and pieces I can get away with before the final comes. Uh, you know, you need to do, uh, you know, a lot of this work I'm doing now is based around the graphics and the vinyl, like the arcade uh, joystick. Um, panel, you know, obviously the vinyls is going to need to be put on those first, so we got these all the way down and just line these up. Now, I'm going to just put two screws in here to support this TV, to me that's, that's enough. Uh, the reason being is this, if we take a look at the MDF and the screen, so yeah, well whatever, this this will work fine for me. Right, so if all goes to plan, so as you can see now, I'll put these uh, longer screws in, and to, to me, you know, this isn't going to do any uh, travelling around or getting banged about everywhere, so in my case, this is just going to be sat in the kitchen, like I said, in the first part, so these two screws are long enough to support it for my needs, so there you go, and that's the first part of the screen part. Right, so I'm going to just uh, prime this, like I said just now, and I'm, I'm using this uh, Johnston's uh, primer, which is really good stuff, and I've used this around the house in the past, and it's really good stuff. It's pretty expensive, but like I said, I didn't pay my dad's did, so thanks, Dad. So yeah, the idea for priming this, as I've mentioned, we got gold uh, paint, high pigment paint in High pigment just means it's got more uh, strength to give it a really gold or maybe chrome uh, colour, so it's uh, strong. So if you've got something smaller in this or even a, a tiny little roller brush, then use one. This is all I can find in here, you know, this should be okay. So I'm going to just dip it in and paint around these sides. So it don't matter if the paint uh, goes on this panel because this is going to be used for the vinyl transfers and I want these uh, parts, these sides to be gold because the uh, transfers, the graphics I've got coming through are kind of gold based ish so I looked into uh, different colours and it was gold which is going to match this one the best so I'm also going to be painting this part just here, so I just need to prime this as well. So if you're new to painting and you want your colours to really be effective and stand out, you need to prime things, especially if you want brighter colours. And as you know, MDF is kind of dark, so if you pale it and you uh, well, obviously prime it like I'm doing right now with white, that gold 
after a few coats of applying it, it's gonna be a lot more vibrant and it's gonna stand out. So this is uh, just the first coat of primer I've done this uh, so far. So as I've been saying, you've also got the marquee piece in. I am going to now give that a quick coat. And I didn't say just now, but I'd say, I'd suggest, the more brighter you can make this primer, the more uh, the gold is gonna stand out. So I'm gonna do probably three, even four coats of primer on this, because I want this as bright as possible. So I'm also gonna paint, like I'm doing right now, this marquee part, because this bit is also gonna be gold. So you know, there are certain things which might need to be painted on here, like the uh, corners, that type of thing. But until I can get the vinyls uh, delivered, which is looking like tomorrow, like I said, uh, it's hard to judge where certain parts need to be gold. So I'm just doing the essentials now for this. So again, uh, two or three, possibly even four coats of primer. So that's the first coat on this one. And if we look at the control uh, panel here, uh, this part is gonna stick out. And just in case the wrong wrap don't wrap around that, which I'm not sure until I get, I'm gonna just be cautious and have this prepared. So I'm gonna uh, give this a uh, prime as well. So make sure this is around the right way. So obviously our joystick is gonna be here. So I'm just gonna paint the bottom half uh, side of this part. And if you, again, if you get the paint on this panel, it don't matter if it's a vinyl that's going over it. And you know, that's a good thing about building your own uh, bar top, is that you're not limited to other people's uh, suggestions or how they build them. This is totally your build, and you can do what you want with it. So, you know, it's got a lot of advantages. And if you watch these videos I'm doing, you'll discover yourself it's not actually that hard to, to do one of these. And it's fairly cheap. If you look in the right places, you know, the monitor alone is like 15 pounds. So you can really build these on a really good budget. So I'm going to leave this to dry. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to attempt to remove the bezel, the frame uh, that is on here, often known as a bezel. And I've just used something really flimsy to uh, get in between the recess in the top of it. And so if you can see here, this is actually coming apart. And the point of this part is, is that we don't want uh, this on there. You know, it's not very really arcade like so. As you can see now, it is coming apart on the top. And I'm going to continue this process on the sides here. So just be very careful uh, that you don't break the bezel uh, because we might need it at some point. So just in case and to be precautious, just remove it as um, careful as possible. Right, so I've just used a screwdriver, a flat-ended screwdriver, just to take off the rest and it's looking uh, for what I actually hoped it was going to look like. So let's just disconnect uh, the bottom part of the bezel here. And really, if I could go back, I would have done this before putting the mount on the back. So, like I say, just do this with extreme caution, just in case you need that bezel uh, frame back in the future. Right, so I can see already there's the button section which is on that PCB uh, just beneath um, the bezel. It's mounted onto the bezel, I see this a bit, which was to be expected. It's a little bit time consuming this part, but once it's out, um, it should be the planning of how I expect it to look. So when you're doing this, just make sure the PCB which is attached to the buttons on the bezel doesn't get damaged or uh, uh, disconnected from the wiring. 
and I'll show you what I mean in a sec about this. And you'll also notice that underneath here is the speakers. So yeah, like I said, it's a very uh, irritating part, but it should look good when it comes together. Yeah, and I'll tell you, we are going to be using the same monitor as this mo monitor, which is a Philips, uh, Philips 196V4 LAB2. Just go very cautious with the bottom of this because it's very uh, delicate. So I'm doing this, that's the paint dry in the background. And yeah, the speakers are now being deattached. And this PCB button uh, part here is, there we go. So this is our frame, this is obviously the bezel, and we don't need this, but keep it aside just in case you need it. And this is it, so we've now got rid of the very uncut arcade Philips and the M22 sticker. And we are left with, as you can see here, these are the speakers, if you can see this, and you've got one on each side, and this part here, this part here is the PCB, which is uh, the controls for the power and everything like that for the monitor, so uh, that's that section done, and just a last note whilst we got the screen completely out like this, I'm going to just use some uh, surface polish, now by all means if you've got screen cleaner, use screen cleaner, so in this case, I'm just going to use polish, which isn't really recommended, but under limited circumstances, I shall proceed with caution. And as you can see, the dirt coming off of this is pretty bad. So if you need to clean your screen, now is the part, I think, so uh, to do this rather. So just clear away the smudges obviously if you're doing this. And you know, I've watched people on uh, YouTube myself uh, building these things in the past and uh, there's parts of it which they don't explain, uh, such as the removing the bezel part on the, on the monitor. So that's why I've included this part to help people. And whilst I'm with the monitor, I'm going to prep it. So I'm going to take the power cable, which is this is uh, called a kettle lead. Most monitors come with these, but if you buy one, make sure it comes with a kettle lead. Uh, so kettle leads are used a lot around the house, that type of thing on uh, electrical appliances, PCs, used kettle plugs, uh, the tar fires, so on. So the reason I'm plugging all this in now is because the next part coming, uh, you'll need to be sure that all this is plugged in just to make it easier. So plug in there and we have got our DVI to HDMI converter cable, which is obviously gonna go into the white uh, DVI port here, if you can see that. So I'm gonna just pop this into that port. And also, if you're new to this, I've never seen one of these before. There's a couple of uh, knob type things on the top of these. And also, if you get VGA to HDMI, you'll get the same. Uh, so in this case, just tighten them up and that will just uh, firmly secure them into the back of the monitor so it's not loose. Uh, you know, they, these are old school monitors, so uh, nowadays everything's pretty much HDMI. So for VJ and DVI, it was very, very common to get these to tie them in, to uh, tighten them up so they're secure. So this is it so far. I've actually decided to paint this all black on second thoughts. I've just thought um, everything would look more consistent where you've got the black sides, uh, you know, these parts, and the black uh, going down here. And I've also done this going across. Now there's little, little raises here which uh, can be sanded down ever so slightly but this is where we're going with it and as you can see uh, as it's drying after a few coats to shine the satin is uh, coming out and what I'm gonna do I've uh, asked my dad uh, <laughs> to give me his varnish uh, which is satin varnish and this is gonna look even shinier and that's the effect we're looking for so 
Uh, next up, what I'm going to do with this is attempt to put the screen in place. So the paint is drying, as you can see, all the sides are covered on the computer itself, on the cabinet itself, rather. So all that's drying. So what I'm getting on with now is actually putting the computer itself inside the cabinet. So here is the computer in the middle, and what I'm doing is uh, drilling some more holes into this mount so the computer itself is nice and stable. Okay, so this bit is going to be a little bit tricky and I think this is going to be the most trickiest part. So, uh, as I showed earlier on, I attached everything to the monitor so it's um, just easier that way. So you've got all the wires and the connectors and everything coming out. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is actually thread the a power cable through one of the ventilation holes as so and the other cable the DVI to HDMI cable needs to be uh, just loose for now and as we've seen earlier on I took the bezel off now this bit is going to be one of the awkward tricks and I've just noticed uh, two of to both sides are exposing the MDF. So if I put the bezel back on, I'm gonna yeah. So the MDF is still exposed on both sides, which is lovely. I've now got a paint on both black. So bear with me. Okay. So whilst we're waiting for these excess parts to dry of the man, I'm gonna start. Uh, putting this together so we're gonna put the buttons in here so I painted uh, the bottom half of this so I'm not worried about the rest because this is on there say you're looking up at it we want it to look black as well so everything's black uh, obviously the side is gonna drop out just there so you're gonna need that black and the rest of this is gonna be tomorrow should the graphics come, which I dearly hope they do, is going to be covered in the uh, graphics. So, to test the buttons themselves, because I'm not actually testing them yet, I'm going to just uh, get these set up a minute. So, like I said in the last video, we've got most different LED uh, buttons here, and I'm going to thread them all through the holes. And yeah, there's certainly plenty of buttons in with these. <laughs> I think there's over more than that I need. So let's take a look. And this is going to require some more drilling. So um, yeah, like I said, the black part is going to be underneath. And this side is going to be where the buttons go. So uh, if we put the transparent smaller ones aside for now, and I'm going to start off by, so we've got obviously got the joystick here, followed by the buttons. And if you do this, make sure the buttons are the right way round. Uh, so, yeah, if you can see what I'm doing. So we've got one. And remember, bear in mind, these will be coming back out tomorrow once I put the uh, graphics on. So I'm going to go like this. So two reds. And they're pretty easily slotable. I'm not sure if I mentioned in the last video, but once the vinyl was down, what uh, stuck on what I do, I use a Stanley knife, and I'm gonna uh, just do a uh, slip through these parts across. So when you press the buttons through, it will make them a bit more uh, sticking down. It will stick them down a lot better. So I'm gonna go for this scheme. Uh, I'll probably change my mind by tomorrow, but the uh, time uh, I have a sleep on it anyway, so I'm going to just go for this scheme for now. That's all of those done. 
Now, as I mentioned in my last video, the way these, uh, I'll just show you the other side actually before I talk about this. I also got those happy threaded through. And uh, yeah, yesterday, in or the day before the last video I did on this, you'll see these. And these need to be wired up to an encoder, which is one of these. So, we got these, and this is obviously our joystick part of it. So what these, uh, how these work is, and in fact, I'm gonna do this in a sec, I think about I can do this part. So you need to drill holes in, obviously these are then stuck down um, through screws. So, in fact, I'm gonna get onto that part now. So for those that likes hearing the sound of a drill, I'm purposely recording this bit, so like I say, these need to be done from the inside and try not to drill through the opposite side, you shouldn't want to although it can be covered with vinyl if that's what you're going to be using. So I'm going to just uh, drill from the here to screw this one down so it's secure. So like I said, try not to uh, drill down far too, mu uh, too much because you'll end up with a hole obviously on the other side. You don't really want to do that. So I'm going to do both of these joysticks for now. And if you're not sure what a joystick is, I don't think you've lived. But I'm sure most of you do. And I've been through a few of my time. Let's just screw this one down really quickly if I can find short enough screws to do this. I think I'm going to need to order some screws. So, yeah, I found some uh, really short screws here which shouldn't. Yeah. Well, let's give this a go. Um, So if they do happen to um, come out on the other side, just tap them down with obviously just unscrew them so you don't have a short spiky part on the outer side of it. So this is going fine. And got the other screw for which I'm done here. So it's surprising how many uh, different uh, screw links you need to work with on something like this, it turns out. So. <laughs> so, what I've done so far, this seems to be holding fine for now. So, to give you an idea. So here we go, so uh, one thing to note, when you're putting these joysticks in, make sure that they're centerized. so, you know, once you screw through, you might find that the stick is pushing down on the sides, you don't want that, you need to be as centered as possible, so you've got a uh, full left, right, up, down diagonals going on. So, yeah, uh, this is how it looks, and the next part is... Obviously, putting these buttons back in, which is falling out with me drilling. So, like I said, more likely I'll change my mind by tomorrow. But uh, we shall see. So, blues in here. And we'll get them. Yeah, then we've also got a uh, four green leftover, so if not, I'll just take a thing out for all green in there. Oh, green in there. So, uh, if you watch yesterday's or the day before's videos, you will notice that I pulled out these caps. And they're not caps, they're. Uh... I'll show you in a sec what these are. If I can find the other one. So, what I'll do, I'm going to just show you. So, these are little covers which hides the hole just here. So, uh, I'm going to turn up. So, next part is putting the knots on the sticks, which is pretty easy. So, 
like just screw, screw these on. There we go, very nice up. So I'm not gonna screw it all the way down. It's like I said, this is gonna be coming back on tomorrow and wait for the vinyls. So just need to to close the other cover or the other stick which seems to gonna disappear and act. Ah, you know what, I really can't find that anywhere, which is a bit odd. So, uh, I found it was hiding away, so yeah, I'm going to just cover this one up just for now, so it looks fancy. Like I said, just lightly screw this on, this is coming off tomorrow. Now, here comes the more fun parts. So, well, actually fun but tricky, I think this part is going to be. So, uh, let me just adjust this. So the, the aim of this is, is to uh, eliminate any gaps is uh, gapping is possible. You don't want any gaps on show because it will just look messy. So uh, somehow and somewhere uh, this bit's ready and prepped. So I painted this black in the satin like I've done everything else. And this is also going to gloss tomorrow. We also painted the bottom so that's all done. And like I said, I can't really do much else until the artwork comes through because of the bezel. Uh, it needs to fit in there perfectly, so I don't really want to screw up down at this part, uh, point. So what I am going to do is uh, plug all this in, and I'm going to just do a display test uh, for the lights. So I'm going to quickly uh, wire everything up. So if you're if you've never done this before. Uh, you have your USB cables, and uh, I've got two of these, uh, one for each joystick and buttons. So first of all, you need to connect uh, one, of, one of the ends, which is the weird looking squarish end, into one of these encoders here. Today is the day we have got our graphics come through, so first of all, I'm going to um, take off the back of this as so and I've just sanded uh, this down just to make it rough for the transfer to uh, or the graphics to go on to so I need to line this up in the right places for it to stick onto so I'm thinking right around here seems to look good and there's bubbles obviously as you do get on these things when you put them on so that looks okay to me for now and obviously you've got the excess of the graphics which is now poking out so all I'm gonna do in this is just use a, a standing knife to cut along here just to smooth it out Right, so I have now got this uh, firmly, or it should be firmly, stuck down onto the control board. That's all I'm going to do, and I do recommend you, uh, if you're younger, doing this. I've just taken the um, blade out of the Stanley knife. What I'm going to do, as I said yesterday, what I plan to do, is if I cut uh, little crosses, in, I'm going to use, I've taken this out uh, just to access the sharpest ends, the other end is pretty blunt, so I'm going to just gently uh, do these crosses in each uh, bubble, as you can see, this is um, where the buttons are going to be going, so if I do this on each one, and you'll see, well you probably already know if you watch their videos where I'm going with this, So if you do this yourself, just make sure you don't cut into the outside of where the holes are. Uh, you know, you want this to look as good and smooth as possible. So we got six buttons there, and if you look again here, we'll see 
where the control stick joystick is going to go and we got another six buttons here so one two and i'm going to wrap this video up today um so it's a pre-parter uh, i've got everything i need and that's why i'm saying it's going to be the last video for this for top arcade uh, video i'm doing so one two uh, and we got another one there and we got the joystick and the bill just here I know I've already done this several times at this point, so I'm going to put the buttons back in once again. So joysticks are now in, and I'm going to just uh, put the knobs onto these. And that's pretty much this part done. So there we go, very nice. And on the flip side, everything's now nice and securely placed. Right, so now the control panel is uh, with buttons and controllers are done. We're next going to work on actually wiring these up. So if you notice on the back of each one of these buttons, you'll find little ports, uh, white ports here. So uh, these obviously need to be linked up to the encoder and I'm going to just uh, show you what these uh, serial type cables are like uh, which are wired up. So you'll likely get um, bundles of these so if you take a look at these you've got three holes in each one just uh, tear each one of these apart and yeah this is like a serial type thing going on here so just rip these apart like well not rip them apart just unpeel them and all you do from here is just simply plug in one end like this to each uh, button so this bit is very simple and we like a simple life interest Jamie we like a nice chilled peaceful life so let's get these sorted out And yeah, it's going to look a little messy, but just bear in mind, uh, once this is uh, put on the uh, cabinet itself, obviously all this is going to be hid away. <coughs> and you know, more of these just simply unpeel them like this. So put everything in. And what I've done with the uh, panels for the sides, the side graphics, I've just um, weighted them down because obviously they, they come from the uh, graphics vendor uh, in a uh, roll, in like a cardboard uh, tube actually. So obviously they're going to be rounded, so they need to be flattening down prior to applying them to the sides. So almost done wiring this part of things up. And so all your buttons here are now wired up and what I'm going to do is uh, look for uh, two of these weeds. So these ones are going to uh, go into the port here for the joysticks. So let's just quickly wire these. So we got one going, and these are uh, five pin serial uh, cables. And with serial cables, you'll, you'll know um, serial cables are often in this type of format, so just like this, they're, they're often called serial cables. 
So we've got that one going in there, and the other one I've got just here is I'm going to just uh, take off the cable, tie this one up. And again, don't use a blade if you're young age, because uh, we don't want to cut fingers. So, we got this one going in here. So that's this part done. So the next part we need to do is grab the encoders. So as I just showed you before, we've got uh, the encoder here. This is for obviously one side, player one, and we have got a player two encoder, which is here. So two encoders, one for each joystick. Right, so uh, each one of these serial cables come in from the buttons are now going to be needed to put into the encoder. So you'll find a five pin port here on the encoder, which is just here. So just simply plug uh, the serial into this uh, five pin. And I'm going to work on both sides because each uh, port needs to be. Uh, mapped identical to the other port how it's laid out with the encoder so the same serials for say a needs to be in exact same places on each of these encoders so i'm going to just uh put uh the joystick five pin serial into here and what i'm going to do we're going to just uh pretend this uh Pull this over a bit. We're going to pretend this is A, uh, button A, okay? So I'm going to put A, button A, into this. Then I'm going to do the same for uh, player two on uh, the same button, going into exactly the same uh, port here. So number one, and I'm going to just do this for each. Uh, button so do uh, one side then work on to the other side so we'll say this is a uh, button B yeah it's fiddly, bit fiddly. so another one there and we will now do the next one on say player 2 which is going to be in the same place on the same on the other encoder, that is. Right, so we'll now call this one C, button C, and we're gonna uh, put this one into the next port on the third along. And once again, with the other opposite side, Yeah, just be sure you don't break the pins in these ports. Um, basically, you don't want to break any of the pins, otherwise uh, the buttons will, well, won't be responsive. So, we're now on this row down, and I'm going to just say this is D, button D. So, again, put it into the fourth along now, and it's now also on the same side, on the uh, other side. And that's that. And now we've got E, button E, which will go into the fifth row along. And so obviously once again for the other side. And finally the last button, which is C, D, E, uh, F, sorry, so you say button F, and there you go. So we've got all our buttons and joysticks wired up. The next thing we need to do is grab the USB cables, which is here, and these all come with these. And we've got two sides. So this side, which I mentioned before, that strange little square type side, will plug into uh, this end of the encoder. And 
because the other end is going to attach to the computer. So let's just plug up a uh, wiring for the second coder USB. So remember, do this slowly and do everything um, the same, literally the same for each side. So here we go. So pop in this one in here. Now, your next part to do this is you're left with one USB on each encoder. So what you do here is plug into the computer, into the uh, one of the ports, or well, one port, and we have got uh, the second port. And that's pretty much it for wiring up the joysticks. Okay, so we got everything plugged in. The lights are obviously shining now, the computer's all plugged in, and we have got visuals on the screen, which is great. So the next part of this is going to be in actually uh, making these controllers work. So let's take a look. It's going to be upside down on the screen, but uh, what I'm basically doing is I'm going into the configuration uh, section of the computer program I'm running and I'm defining each uh, command, uh, say D-pad left, I'm doing this by now using the joystick. So left, and you watch, uh, if you watch the screen, I know it's upside down, you'll see it corresponds with which I'm pressing. So D-pad right, we're gonna call this the D-pad. And we've got start. Now things are gonna be a bit funny here, uh, simply because there's a few extra buttons we don't have on yet. But I just wanna get the basics of this out of the way. So for start, for now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just press say this one and select as this one. Uh, button A, I'm just gonna get these at least responsive. Now on the buttons we don't have, which is asking for, if I just uh, keep my finger pressed down on each extra one, it will bypass these. So let's just get this set up for now. And as you can see, they're each now saying not defined. So there we go, so if we just bypass all these extra ones, if I just come out of here, you'll notice this controller should now be working, there we go, okay, so let's just uh, quit out this minute, as long as we can see the controller, at least one of them at this point is working, uh, hotkey is asking for, so we don't need that for now, and that will start that select, so if I press, there we go, now I just need to quit back at this program, uh, using the controller which is now uh, working so if I'm if I just quit out of this program so we have now at least got uh, the program and the controllers working in a state uh, fashionable state so if I go to shut down system yeah so that's um, pretty much all of that side's done for now and uh, player two is going to be configured in a short while. Okay, so without uh, me showing you what I've done, uh, is I'm sure you want to see a little more drilling. I've drilled in the panel here for the marquee to fit in. Uh, so I've got the marquee uh, graphics here, which sits in there. So I've got to put some backing on that to enforce it to make it a bit stronger. I've also uh, put the uh, screen in, obviously, and I've kind of made this as deep as possible. Uh, this isn't screwed down yet, for the reasons I've still got some buttons to add. So, so as you can see, I've got a few buttons left. So we're obviously going to have player one and player two. Uh, to signify obviously player one being on this side and player two being on the opposite side so I'm gonna just put these in now which is just another case of just uh, popping them in the hall so okay so we're just gonna start on the side panel here and this is gonna take some doing I think uh, obviously it's a square sheet and there's a ridge in the uh, side of the cabinet itself, so I'm gonna get on with this and I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so I've just done uh, stuck this uh, to get the sticky side out, and trust me, if you're gonna do this, go very careful, you need to watch it, you need to inspect each corner, because I've, I've had uh, 
I'm about to take this back up and uh, reapply it because there have been uh, little corners which have been exposed and obviously what I've uh, seal as much as possible with what you've been given okay so what I'm doing now um, just using a very sharp blade here which I've just found and I'm just gliding it along to get the shape uh, going with these uh, graphics so it's very easy just make sure you've got a very sharp blade to do this and surprisingly the graphics actually comes off like butter, like uh, sweet butter, it's uh, good stuff. So, I've done a lot of this already without filming it. So, we got the ridge here of the arcade. So, let me just show you what I mean if you can see this. If I just slightly cut into this and just use the blade to just gently. Uh, go around the groove there we go so I'm gonna do this again to obviously uh, take away all this excess sticker graphics that we don't need and yeah bits of the black paint is gonna uh, come off during this process but that's just a easy case of just touching it up with uh, some more black paint so can't be out with this bit you know you need to push the blade on the actual uh, arch, um, the ridge of the cabinet itself to get that shape going with the sticker. So yeah, it can be helped. So yeah, some of this is gonna appear to be hard. And what happens is whilst you're pushing down on the arch here, is that you're actually kind of slightly digging into the MDF. So if you can avoid that, try to avoid it, but it is difficult to do this bit. And you obviously don't want to mess up your uh, graphics because you don't fancy getting another one. So, so I'm going to show you now from scratch on the second side how I'm uh, doing this. So you've applied, we rather applied the uh, uh, panels the graphics for the sides so like I said I'm just using a really start, sharp uh, standing knife and what I'm planning to do with the excess of this is using it on different parts of the cabinet so all I'm doing for now is just cutting just let the blade glide just get a tiny little scratch going on and the knife will then just pretty much glide up until you stop it so just there and so that's about it so like I said I'm gonna I'm planning on using uh, this excess for different parts of the cabinet so I don't, I don't know if other people were spanked uh, using this extra stuff you know sort of useful but it's uh, it's gonna work in my case what I'm planning to do with it so just like that and I just got the uh, paper ready to put this back on the excess so again what I'm doing is if I move the camera around I'm just pushing not even pushing just touching actually the uh, side of the MDF around the groove and I'm just letting the standing knife Kind of just glide it around like that so you're getting the shape in. So there's another piece, and obviously, there's going to be little bits and pieces which are a bit rough, so just go over that when uh, you can. So, again, around this, and if you cut off some of the image, it's not really a problem, it's just a part of it. So, another piece there. So, things are looking up now, so both panels, side panels, are now stuck down. And um, I just realized that we got holes for buttons. So I've put a coin button on each side. And it's obviously one there. And as I said just now, you'll likely do some paintwork whilst you're using uh, Stanley Lock to go down. So, you know, little bits like this can be easily touched up. So same process as I was going through the wiring earlier in the video. 
Uh, once you put the button in on the side, it's just another process of using a serial cable, which is the free, free pin uh, cable, which goes into the encoder. So the same process of just lining them up uh, so they're both equal, they're both in the same places for player one and player two. So if I put this on now, just rest it on there, you can see where this is kind of going. It's uh, it's looking good. And what I mentioned just now about the excess uh, graphics, the stickers, what we don't need, it's all black. So problem is I've got with these holes for buttons to go into is that the uh, buttons don't actually fit, which is very annoying. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna attempt to fill these holes up with something and I'm gonna make this whole panel just here uh, using the PVC graphics, just the black stuff. So I just mentioned about these holes just here. So what happened was a few years ago, I had my original mini uh, drill kit stolen from me, but my partner has been kind enough to buy me another one. Of Christmas, I'm pretty sure she bought this for. So thanks again, Becky. So to turn this on, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just gently go around the sides of the hole and just attempt to make it a little bit bigger and we'll see if this works. So uh, obviously you're gonna to need to put this on the highest setting. So let's just see if this is going anywhere. And yeah, it seems to be. There we go. Boom. Done. So I'm going to get on, crack on rather, with the next one. And uh, there we go. That's how to solve the problem. If, uh, this one's gonna be. I think that's gonna need a little bit more drilling there. seems to be fitting perfectly so I'm going to just rub away obviously the dust around that and uh, there we go so I've got this button in I've actually changed my mind uh, as I do so we've got a red one red button here which I think just thinks goes with the uh, colors on the control panel and what I'm gonna do again is obviously uh, clamp these down using these on the backs just so they are in place. So, uh, if you remember just a while ago in a video, when it comes to programming the controls on the computer, I've now got two extra buttons on each player to play around with. So, there we go. So, again, I'm uh, just gonna put this into the back. And of course, uh, you need to wire these up in the same um, way as I've wired up everything else so far. So serial cables, like I mentioned earlier on, can easily be uh, snapped apart. So each serial cable here has got three wires. So just peel these off. And I'm gonna use my foot here <laughs> to do this. There we go. So. Excuse the toes, but uh, that's the way it goes when I'm filming with one hand. Right, so let's just sort this out. So, can't really see this with a camera, so 
I'm kind of doing a bit of guesswork here, so make sure that serial cable is pushed into the white port. There we go. And so we obviously want uh, another one going on for the other side. So you can't really see what I'm doing here. But there it is. Okay, so once again, take the encoder out. So we've got player one, which will, you guessed it, go right next to the previous one. Whoops. Right, so a little while ago, you've seen the program uh, in the buttons. So like I just said, we now got the additional button. So if I just go onto the software and if I go down to configure input, uh, are you sure you want to configure input? It says, and I realize at this point it's, uh, Inverted as you can see it, but makes sense to me. So we've got two ping has detected it says and Call the buttons to configure. So obviously I'm going to go through the same process again uh, So up down left right and for start this time I think I'm gonna use one of the new buttons. So I know you go it's uh, Recognizing it's all wired up correctly and for select I'm going to just uh, use the coin button on the side and now we've got button A, B, X, so for these I'm going to just go for it. And it's asking for left shoulder, right shoulder, so for these I'm going to just black this bit, just, you know, whatever. And with the excess uh, buttons it's asking for, again, it's just a process of keeping your finger uh, pressed down on, say, any one of these buttons, and it will just go to not defined. So this is the way to do it. So you know, you've got options there which isn't applicable for an arcade build. So left analog stick, you know, that type of thing. It's just, uh, it's not what we need. And I'm also gonna define the hotkey uh, button. So uh, what hotkey does is it uh, disables the game. It moves you back to the uh, menu screen, so a uh, hotkey is normally uh, two buttons at once, so for this case, to exit a game, I'm going to use the two uh, buttons here, so the coin button and the red button, and there we go, so there's that, done. So I'm going to leave this for today, I've done a ridiculous amount of uh, work on this today. <laughs> So, um, uh, close the curtains, and it's not entirely uh, pitch dark outside, it's still light, but you get the idea how bright these lights are, and they look really good. So, still got the marquee to do, which will be coming tomorrow, or possibly tonight, if I have a spare couple of hours. And we've ob honest, um, obviously got to uh, raise this and drill this in, and then cover up the hall just here. But, yeah, all in all, it's... Um, it's looking really good. I'm really happy with this. It's getting there. And here it is. This is the final, uh, well, this is it. The project is done. And it's just got a few minor adjustments to do on this. So uh, today, what I did with this was I had this uh, gap missing here uh, so what I did was uh, just took some uh, wood off of an old gate I found out in the alley and I sanded it down cut it off obviously <laughs> first sanded it down uh, put some wood filler in there just to uh, get all the cracks in all the holes out of it and what I did I used some of the excess PVC graphics um, which I didn't need and what I did I just layered this um, on top, so you've got this nice shiny uh, vinyl surface which kind of goes with the control pad, uh, control, well, controls. So, uh, other things I did with this just to make it look a little bit better. If you watch this from part one, I think it was, you'll realize I took the bezel off of the monitor. We were still left with silver. Uh, we're still left with silver uh, frame around it, so I also cut uh, the graphics, the excess graphics, just to blacken it. So, you know, all that's looking good. Uh, one of the things I'm a little bit annoyed about is that the bezel, um, I ordered the wrong one. It was supposed to say Neo Geo on the top, uh, but it was actually for uh, Perspex. 
So for now, I've just used some more excess uh, vinyl and I've done this across the top and believe it or not, this hand here was actually cut in two so I've very carefully stuck it together plus put um, the blades just here, but, you know, just to give it something until the uh, proper thing comes along. So uh, what I've done, I've programmed everything in and I've also now, I don't know if you can see this, but it says coin. So uh, coins correspond with your credit. So let's try this. And if you can hear that. So the coin buttons act as um, mechanism for putting money in. And obviously we got a two player game running here. This is um, looking good to me. You know, I'm quite impressed with it. And then on the side here, I've uh, changed uh, these for red uh, buttons. And that acts as a select button. So start buttons are coins and you've got all your main controllers here. And yeah, it's looking good. And I've got to say, paired with my funky little stall, it goes really well and I'm really happy, really happy how this has turned out. So let's try this. This really, I've just uh, finished uh, doing the last bits and pieces on this bar top in, uh, there you go. So there's me a certain coin. So let's give this a bash. Just um, let's take a look. No idea what this game is. It was some freeware game I uh, downloaded. So, so uh, blue button here shoots. And if I press for player two, and I think. How do you get player two? There you go. So uh, this one is obviously player two. And we'll go back to player one. So yeah, it's looking good. Whoa. And what I've done is I've also stretched the screen on this. Um, it was in a four by three ratio first uh, originally which was kind of like the old school box. So what I've done, I've stretched the image and I've just applied a filter to it just to uh, delete, uh, get rid of the uh, pixelated squareness and we're left with this really smooth effect. So yeah, we're looking good. And what I've done uh, to get back to the main menu, I've also uh, programmed in a combination of two buttons which brings us to this screen, which is uh, RetroArch, and uh, it's a very good program, and of course it's free. Uh, so from here, you can adjust different settings. So uh, like I was just saying about um, changing the ratio, um, I'm pretty sure I went to options, and was it settings? Possibly, and yeah, video, and from here, you can uh, go to scaling and aspect ratio and you can get your different ratios uh, going on here. So if I just go to four by three, go back to the game. And now this should be a smaller ratio, which is more. There you go. So yeah, the four by three ratio is a better, but you know, some people like a stretched uh, screen. So all looking good and uh, something else I did with this build today was I've not actually screwed this down yet this I've still got a little bit of adjustments to do but if I just take this off you'll notice that I tied it or I meant to have tied it everything up so there you go so and this is it, so uh, yeah, relatively cheap build, uh, didn't cost a fortune, and it was like a proof of concept really that uh, people charge a fortune for these things, I've, I've made this fairly cheap, and um, there you go, so uh, thanks for watching, hope you've all learned something from this, if you've got any questions, just ask in the comments.